Hello everyone, I'm so excited. I've been spending the last few hours playing around with DeepSeek R1 and the distilled down versions of those models. I want to first talk about the news, why this is important, go through some of the details that I've discovered, and now we have some toys to play with for the upcoming weeks as there is just an enormous amount for me to actually test and get into. So yes, you can see DeepSeek R1 on GitHub right now. And when I saw this come out, I at first was, I was excited, but I was like, oh, I'm not going to be able to run that model because it's going to be gigantic. It's no way it's going to fit on my machine. But that is until I got down to a place where they actually talk about distilling models down into base models of Llama 3.1, Quinn 2.5, the 14 and 32 billion parameter one, and Llama 3.3, which is one I can run, but not very well. So anyway, I want to kind of talk about the details and why this is important. So here is the Quinn 14 billion parameter model. This is one I've been running probably the most since this news came out. And the reasoning of this has just been very good. I've asked if some things that other models I've tried have actually struggled with. So I'm excited to see kind of how far I can push it because you never know about benchmarks. You know, the benchmarks are kind of like only one part of the story. Every one of us probably prompts different and talks to the uh, LLM different. I'm excited to kind of see the final results here. So here are the benchmarks. This is a complete PDF that they've released. And I went through and I've kind of summarized some of the key points here. Ultimately, it performs on par, if not sometimes slightly better than 01. It's just such an amazing achievement for a company in China that has been technically constrained by the amount of compute that they have available to them to be doing so well in this space and to be sharing all of this publicly. Like the fact that we can take and we can run these models locally, the distilled ones in particular, and DeepSeek R1 if we wanted to and if we had a large enough system to do it, it's just absolutely phenomenal. This is the thing that I just never expected. The fact that they distilled down, which basically they use DeepSeq R1 to fine tune, to, to teach these models to be reasoning models. Just phenomenal to me. Um, you can kind of see here with the hatched blue bar, they, are, they do very well in the AIME 2024 pass one, code force that they do well in. They did less than OpenAI 01 in the GPQA Diamond. Math 500, they did better. MMLU, they did slightly worse at 90.8 compared to 91.8 to 01. But check out this light blue, DeepSeq R1, 32 billion. I can run that model on my machine with a decent context at a Q4 underscore K underscore M. And I am pumped because this model is performing very good. Check out the place that this is landing. DeepSeek R1, 32 billion, is landing just below all of the different stats here. For example, in Code Forces, it got a 90.6 compared to a 96.3 of DeepSeek R1. That's just unbelievable to me. Again, benchmarks are only one thing. I'm going to have to actually use it. I want to see how good it actually is at coding. Reasoning models, I kind of have, I love them for some things. Coding, they can be a little bit annoying because they can be so verbose kind of working through things. But I will try it out, and I'm going to see how it performs, especially on the more challenging things I need to do. All right, I'm going to boil down the kind of the document that we just talked about into a few key points. So introduction to DeepSeq R10 and DeepSeq R1, that's where they started. DeepSeq R10 is a model trained via large scale reinforcement learning without supervised fine tuning, supervised fine tuning. It demonstrates strong capabilities, but faces challenges like poor readability and language mixing. But DeepSeq R1 is an enhanced version that incorporates multi-stage training and cold start data before reinforcement learning. It achieves performance comparable to OpenAI's 01-1217 
on reasoning-based tasks. In the RL approach, the models are trained using group relative policy optimization, which is a RL framework that avoids the need for a critic model, which reduces training costs. And I highlighted that because it's so important that these models are being released to us and, and developed for such a discounted price compared to what we're hearing about some of these other companies using. DeepSeq R10 emerges with powerful reasoning behaviors through RL, such as self-verification, reflection, and generating long chains of thought. And I can show you some examples of the long chains of thought in the even the, the Quinn version of this. And then for performance and evaluation, here's just a few stats. You know, DeepSeq R10 achieves a 71% pass on the AIME 2024. And then it goes to an 86.7 with majority voting matching OpenAI 010912. It's funny that they changed the version there, but they probably were testing that stuff differently. Uh, DeepSeek R1 achieved 79.8 pass at one, pass one on AIME 2024 and 97.3 on Math 500, which is also comparable to OpenAI 01. This is the part I'm most excited about and so thankful for. The reasoning capabilities of DeepSeq R1 are distilled into smaller models, 1.5, 7, 8, 14, 32 billion, 70 billion, based on Quinn and Lama. Huge, just absolutely huge. Some of these distilled models outperform state-of-the-art open source models with DeepSeq R1 distill Quinn 32 billion parameters, achieving a 72.6 on AIME 2024 and 94.3 on Math 500. That is models we can run on our systems. Unbelievable. So I want to talk a little bit about what distillation actually is. So really what you end up having is a teacher model. That's the DeepSeq R1 model. You have the student model, which is a smaller model that you want to train to mimic the behavior of the teacher model. The student model is typically less expensive, uh, computationally expensive, and a lot faster to run. And then basically the student model learns from the outputs of the teacher model. Instead of training the student model from scratch on what real data, it tries to replicate the behavior of the teacher model. Now, the training process they used here, they state that the authors fine tune the smaller models like Quinn and Lama using 800,000 samples generated by DeepSeq R1, which allows these smaller models to inherit that reasoning capabilities of the larger model. So they don't need to go through that extensive training, which is very expensive. I got a kick out of this when I saw this on the local Llama subreddit. Um, just something kind of funny because DeepSeek, I know a lot of people aren't a fan of it because it's a Chinese company, but you have to like give them credit for what they're developing. They really are pushing like open. We want this competition. Yes, we may want an American company to win. I want Google to do better than it's doing, but DeepSeek is, it is just closing in like it is doing so so good i do worry a little bit that um, the u.s may do something to kind of block deep seeks progress but we'll see what ends up happening there this is the full pdf here uh, i was just kind of like looking at it in the github feel free to kind of read through all of this uh, on your own time if you want to but it's super interesting i spent a good decent amount of time kind of like breaking that down Oh, one thing I didn't cover is going back up here real quick to the uh, challenges. So we talked a little bit about the readability and language mixing, which are addressed in DeepSeq R1. The models are super sensitive to prompts and few shot prompting can degrade performance. Zero shot prompting is recommended for opt optimal results. I'm going to have to test this a little bit more, but it's just something to note. Zero shot prompting is recommended for optimal res results. Uh, the one thing I want to call out is if you want to use this in their API, which I have been playing around with as well, uh, I checked this. I want to say this has got to be very new like for this to be accessed here. I think it might be today, honestly, because I have been on this page before to look at their pricing, and I did not see this option here. Their price is 14, per, 14 cents if you hit a cache on input, 55 cents if you hit uh, do a cache miss, and then $2.19 for a million output tokens. Now, that is, uh, you can look at that and be like, that's way more expensive than 28 cents, but that's actually going to go up to $1.10. I want to show you O1's pricing. So look at O1. 
we're looking at $60 per 1 million output tokens compared to $2.19. Holy crap. That is a ridiculous difference. You're talking 14 cents for 1 million input tokens or 55 cents if there's a cash miss versus $7.50 for the cash or $15 for the input tokens. That is unbelievable. I just, I can't even say that enough. Like the price here, OpenAI is gonna have to do something to start like lowering the prices to get to this sort of level, level of competition because these prices are just phenomenal. And if the outputs are as good as what the benchmarks are showing, this is going to probably eat into a lot of their business. Again, where they're, they're gonna have trouble is because they are a Chinese company, there's gonna be a lot of lack of trust. So what we really need is we need a US-based company to actually host this model for us so we can utilize this without gouging us on the pricing side. You know, maybe we pay double what this price currently is, but they're hosted in the US. I would be totally behind that. It'd be incredible. If you do want to play around with this today, you can do it at chat.deepseek.com. You can use the DeepSeek um, or DeepThink toggle there. I do want to show that this is where um, the local llama has just been kind of like taken off today. See 870 upvotes there. We see 01 performance at 150 at the cost and open source. This is just incredible. That's, they're comparing this to 01, I bet. They're looking at like the benchmarks there. And then DeepSeek R1 Distill Quinn 32B is straight SOTA delivering more than GPT 4.0 level LLM for local use without any limits or uh, restrictions. Again, yeah, if it's doing GPT 4.0 locally in a 32 billion parameter model that I can run locally, I am going to be ecstatic. I am definitely going to try to upgrade to the RTX 5090 so I can run that a little bit faster because it hits the limit of my 7900 XDX pretty well. And I'd like to maybe like run a larger context window there. And then finally, here's a, somebody that put together kind of like a coded um, benchmark, a color coded benchmark. And I thought it was like very interesting to kind of talk through how they, they did this. And these local, this local llama uh, subreddit is just phenomenal for like tracking, you know, people's thoughts and impressions of this so far. Anyway, I'm going to just jump over here real quick to LM Studio to show you something that I ran just to give you an idea of the difference here. So first, I asked, what is the 21st Fibonacci number? And you can see this is the distilled model of Quinn 14 billion parameters. And it went through and it came up with the number 6765. But if you were to go and like actually look that up, that is the incorrect number. So what they end up doing is they end up questioning themselves and they walk down into F21 is 10,946, which is the correct number. So it's funny because they wanted to clarify, um, basically they're trying to figure out like what is starting. Is it zero starting or one starting? So you can kind of see if zero starts, it's this. If one starts, it's that, which I thought was very, very interesting that it did that. Now, looking at the original model, which is the Quinn 2.5 coder, 14 billion instruct, this is the coder variant, which is probably different than the other one, but it's the only one I currently have. You can see it still comes up with the, the right number, but the chain of thought is very different. It doesn't do any sort of like rationalizing here. So I've got a few more examples here I want to talk about. This is one that's very interesting to me. It's a little bit of a, a brain twister. But three friends, Alex, Bo, and Chen, are discussing their favorite sports. One likes basketball, another likes soccer, and the third likes tennis. Each makes two statements. Alex says, Bo likes soccer, I like tennis. Bo says, Chen likes basketball, I don't like soccer. Chen says, I don't like basketball, Alex likes soccer. Exactly one statement from each person is true, and one is false. Who likes which sport? Now, this is the Quinn 2.5 Coder 14 billion instruct model that ran this one. And you can see in particular, that it comes up with Alex likes basketball, Bo likes tennis, Chen likes soccer. All right, so now we're gonna look at the DeepSeek R1 Distill Quinn 14 billion parameter model. 
because I was very blown away by how good this actually did at this problem. So now the correct answer should be Alex with tennis, Bo with basketball, and um, Chen with soccer. And if you look here, remember that's we got uh, these two mixed up. So Alex should be tennis and Bo should be basketball is the difference. And then if we go through and look at what happened in this model, we ended up getting Alex likes tennis, Bo likes basketball, and Chen likes soccer. And the way it gets to that is just phenomenal. You can kind of see the just the chain of thought that goes through, walking through the individual cases, comparing it. It ultimately used a crap ton of context there, uh, but it got the correct answer. I am super excited by these reasoning models. I think having these locally to be able to do complex things is just incredible. I would love to know, have you guys had a chance to play around with DeepSeek R1 yet? In particular, I'm much more interested in the local LLM versions of these because the fact that we can run these locally without having to rely on sending our data to a uh, foreign company, a Chinese company, is just awesome to me. The fact that they went and invest their time and resources in helping these community models be better is just unfreaking believable. Anyway, today has been an amazing day. I am exhausted. It's been an awesome day. And while I was working today, I just could not keep from thinking about how excited I was to go test out more of these DeepSeek R1 models. Let me know if you've had a chance to try it in the cloud yet or any of the distilled models down locally. I can't wait for what's going to happen the rest of this year. And I really do just keep going back to thinking about this meme in that DeepSeek is keeping OpenAI on the move. And that is a good thing for everyone. As much as you guys might hate or dislike DeepSeek as a Chinese company, the fact that it is competition that is pushing OpenAI forward is good for all of us. The fact that they're releasing models that are local, it's good for all of us. Anyway, I need to go to bed. Thank you guys so much for everything. Let me know your thoughts below. Like and subscribe if you like this kind of content. Till next time, see ya.